The uh, Senate improvement has been quite smart. There's no question that, as you quite rightly said, we sat here this time last year and it was a uh, primarily less than adequate sort of opinion on providing um, the, the movement from sort of less than adequate to adequate to sort of substantively sound level. Uh, it, it's quite a marked improvement. Like, so it's kind of sort of a, a, a knock out heart, if you like, kind of thing. Yeah. We all know that the Senate has not put projectiles in two ways about that. Uh, but there is still there are issues to resolve, there are things that are clearly on the table now, something that are uh, progressing nicely, but we need to keep a close eye on sort of thing, the improvements that we need to make in some sort of key reflected within the report. There are other issues in relation to sort of um, business continuity, and um, other issues in relation to some of our corporate procurement procedures and processes, which uh, management are aware of, we've sort of brought their attention and waiting for them to address those issues. So uh, it's not all sweet to my mind, so it's not looking at this to many sort of roasting the glass of like We've made significant improvements on how we continue to make them, but we need to sort of keep on top of it. And then we as, as a committee need to sort of oversee that sort of uh, that development and that progress. I'll continue to bring the report to details on how the operation of how things are progressing. But, uh, it, uh, you, you're quite right in terms of the use of the language. The, the language is, is a sort of a fairly standard language that's used across the whole of the professional or the sector, something. Um, but nevertheless, I, I hope that sort of answers your question some because of some work you see. In terms of how we compare to other similarly sized organisations, um, it's it difficult because I haven't got all of that information available. I sit on a, um, a Northwest Chief and Temple Officers sort of group which uh, consists of some 20 other authority Chief and Temple Officers and Temple Orders, uh, and we do compare and contrast something like that. I would say that uh, we probably sit alongside maybe 60% of those organisations. Uh, the remainder probably split between uh, maybe 10 percent of the robots, something 20 percent that sort of sit in there. So it's a real mixed bag, but I'd say we're, we're, we're sitting comfortably within the majority of those sort of organizations in the North North councils in the Northwest. If that helps at all, it's difficult to be any more precise than that. You know, I could go ahead and sort of dig out some more information and, and provide you with it if you're so inclined, but to give you just a yeah. Any more questions or comments? I'd just like to uh, echo what I've said about uh, you and your department, Mark, doing an excellent job now. I've done the four years I've sat here. Uh, so, Dr. Report? Yeah, and the 
deputy chair went through uh, and evaluated yourself against or yourself against how you perform, whether you comply with all the uh, the fairly detailed best practice requirements of the um, the uh, there are a number of actions that have arisen from that report. Uh, nowhere near as many as as the road from the this exercise when we only took it twelve months ago, but I think there were a dozen plus items identified. There are three items that, that have been flagged up here that, that, that the chair and the uh, feel a lot on whether you've got attention and then included an action plan and um, again as a reference to the report. Um, one of the uh, actions identified excuse me involved dating in terms of reference to this committee to include the frequency of meetings. Um, I have included an appendix three some appropriate wording on that which uh, will facilitate this and with your approval I can take that away and make sure that that's the necessary <coughs> with regards to the other two items that are included on the action plan checklist um, we do feel uh, that we comply with the requirements of the best practice, but we feel that the arguments have been made in these two areas, and those are two issues that have been taken away and have been discussed with the chief officers, and we will come back to you at the next meeting on that with some sort of uh, actions that we will take as a result of that. Um, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Just a very brief one, really, um, a ministry point, really. You mentioned starting with page 81 priorities and issues, which are down there. Who actually decides the issues that you're going to investigate, Mark, or is it something that's set down by statute? <coughs> the, uh, the actual template that's used in itself, so the checklist is one provided to us by the uh, SIPPAS, um, I forget the title I refer to, uh, the uh, a Toolkit for Local Authority Open Committees. So it's quite specific. They tell us like, sort of what all the committees should be, how they should be performing, and, and what issues they should be with so it's something that sort of casting style and is used up and down the country by every sort of local party. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Read the recommendation here. Okay. Um, this um appendix to okay. if you look at page ninety three appendix three summarises the work of the internal audit service for a given period. For this particular period, like this report covers the, uh, the period from 1st of March through to the 31st of May and concentrates on identifying any items of note or items that I feel need to be escalated to yourselves from monthly reports that you receive um, that may require the attention or, or action by yourselves. Uh, provides performance data relating to the actual internal audit service itself identify the developments that are currently taking place in relation to the service. Members attention is specifically drawn to section 2.2a of the report where there's just one item of note included within this particular report. The findings in order that were conducted that requested the strategic director to assess the adequacy and effectiveness of the ranges in place for maximising income of golf courses. The audit included an appraisal of the current fees and charging in place, an analysis of the methodology of reconciling takings and bankings, consideration of potential sources of increased income and the current work practices regarding uh, the golf professionals. Now the work identified quite a number of areas for improvement and development and the board included nine actions for senior management who have responded extremely positively and have already implemented five of those nine actions with the remaining four being sort of ongoing work in progress which we'll be monitoring and again reporting back to yourselves on in due course. Follow work is actually scheduled for early September so um, that's when I would like expect to bring the report back to yourself and identify that this is closed off on all these recommendations and I can provide you with more detail in terms of the actual actions that were taken if it's if it's something to yourselves. Um, but I'll say I hasten to add that, 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 that this was done, it was commissioned by one of the chief office, which is extremely encouraging because I think mean, it's not always going in and any bank problem being referred to. This was commissioned by I say a strategic director by that, which is really good news from the government's control perspective. And equally the response received from those managers like that again is extremely positive. There were a lot of actions which weren't easy to address, but were addressed almost say, with some media seats and things like that. Uh, acknowledge the nature of this that we were flagging all by not taking program action. So I'll send them back in September and provide a lot of much more detail on this issue. Um, 
Members' attention has also been drawn to section 2.2 of the report where the table identifying information relates to those orders or recommended actions included in other reports have not currently been implemented and identified. The actual table is attached as Appendix 1. Now, all the recommendations identified within this appendix are currently annotated, which indicates that progress is being made to address the issues that are outstanding within the agreed timescales. I think that's the point to bear in mind within the agreed timescales. So, there's nothing on there that is causing me to lose sleep at this precise moment in time. But we continue to monitor these things now and I continue to bring this report to yourself that should something slip and something turns from now to a red, then it becomes something that I feel is appropriate to bring it before yourselves and ask that you take that action and then we feel appropriate. Section 2.4 will identify uh, information related to the performance of the intent of the service. And you'll note that at this moment in time the service is on target to deliver the intent of the plan. Given that we're only two months in, I'd that, be very disappointed with where we've got uh, <laughs> It's in the uh, encouraging this far. Feedback from clients and management remains good, again, with all the key actions identified or reports being agreed, and the client satisfaction levels that we referred to earlier remaining consistent and high. Section 2.5 report identified the continuing improvements that have been made to the delivery of the intent of the service, part of our overall improvement plan. There's still more to do, and there will always be things that I will be adding to that list because I think this continues to evolve and think it's healthy and that is a pretty good thing. So. I'll continue to include this item to these reports as we move forward until you tell me otherwise. Members are requested to note the report and take any corresponding action that they deem is appropriate. I'm uh, more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. 
not put the back to the thing that we told us about the life. And that's the reality where we need to be there. And that's the question that took me over. So that's a risk that's at this point. The risk of not gaining the revenue that it should be gaining. But also the risk is also a good return on it the other way. But it costs us £10 to get £5 in. Well, if, if that's the risk as well, and it's understanding that risk as well as understanding the other risk. There's that balance on the other side of the coin. Yeah, just to add, I totally agree with what Ron said there. It's the old conundrum, isn't it? If you put staff on full time to stop anybody going there free, then they don't turn up and try and go free. It's only when nobody's there that they turn up. I wonder if there's any uh, work being done in trying to see what level of authorities try to do to mitigate this problem. I mean, obviously, best practices is listening to what they say. Has anybody had any words with other authorities? I assume they have done, but is there any work that produced anything beneficial as a result of having? I am certainly aware that those conversations have and are taking place for the other years. Um, I'm not aware of the, the detail. I mean, I, I wouldn't be at this stage. Personally, we looked up the work, we produced a report that identified things that needed to be done. Uh, officers have gone away and are evaluating and looking at those options. And, and so I, I'm, I'm not a party to, to what's coming back in. But I will be in due course because we want to take forward work and we want to know what actions have been undertaken to address the issues and then what sort of uh, benchmarking and what sort of uh, conversations take place. Well, there's a quick one, Joe. Yeah. There's quite a, a large piece on asset management here, isn't there, which is interesting to see. Isn't that again has got control environment minimum. I'm not quite sure what that refers to, but it does seem to be a large element 